Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Maybe silence all cell phone and electronic devices, please. My name is Lidora Nicholas. I'll be your moderator for this morning and afternoon class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. We were classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joe Turner, President Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word, our Son, is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each Lord God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither Hebrew, Greek, nor the Latin language have any character letters in their alphabet that can produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such a name as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible rendering of the true and original name of our Father in his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He's the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on his chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word of Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions, and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading a preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in his vision. 
Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, court, round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, we have ten primary constitutional aims and objectives and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose due to dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Night is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the New Earth State. Our watchword is peace. And our slogan is, Speak the Truth. We have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Janet Franklin. Scripture lesson is, 1 Samuel 17 chapter will be read by Sherry William. Our scripture re readers are Dr. Sherry William and uh, Dr. Jennifer Marshall. Let us all bow our hearts and minds and give thanks to Yahweh for once again allowing us to gather together as one to learn something, anything about him and his son. Let us forget the things that are happening in the world because we know that it's Yahweh's plan just working itself out. We should not be afraid, you know, not of man anyway, just what can man do to us. He can kill us, but that'd be a blessing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, it, it really doesn't matter, you know. We just focus on our Creator and His Son and go with the flow. And with all that, I'll say, hallelujah. hallelujah. ...with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. 1 Samuel <coughs> chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shosham, how do you say that? Shosham? I don't know. Which belongeth to Judah and pitched between Shosham and what? Azka? In Ephes Demon. I don't know. 
And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man was old in the days of Saul, belonging to the persons of high esteem. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and the next unto him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep in, at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp of thy brethren and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousands, thousand, and look how thy brethren fare and bring me news. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting the, with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array army against army and David left his articles in the hand of the keeper of the baggage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard 
when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that uh, thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? I only asked a question. And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and, his uncirc and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living Elohim. David said, Moreover, Yahweh that delivereth me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and Yahweh be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he assayed to go, and he was not used to it, for he was not used to it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with thee, for I am not used to them. And David put them off him, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his idols. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day... Will Yahweh deliver thee into thine hand, mine hand, I'm sorry, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass, carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is an Elohim in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that Yahweh saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is Yahweh's and he will give into our hands he will give you into our hands and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and sling it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword 
and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharon, even to Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of the servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. That was 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Hallelujah. Great speaker for this morning will be all right, brother, Dr. Lawrence Edwards, come over here, dude. It has been a uh, good little while since I've been asked to stand up on this floor, and I give all praise, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, because he's the one that makes it all possible. <coughs> uh, that's a wonderful story. Now, you think uh, Yahweh does not deal with uh, a man of how, what size or how strong you are, mm -hmm or what goes on. Anybody can take anything down. And it just, it just gives us the, the strength that shows us that we can overcome anything with his help. It doesn't matter. He just, uh, he just puts it in you. And you, ain't got to, you don't have to do nothing. Just believe in him. Everybody's walking out. Uh, the, the world out there believe that they have to do something to earn favor. You don't have to do anything but praise him. They just like the sign down the street says, he's still coming. He ain't got here yet. He ain't got down there yet, but we know where he is. <laughs> he's been, he never left. He told you, I will always be with you. I will be with you forever. And that's where he is. He, all, he has, all they have to do is just look inside yourself. And, and the thing about it is, Look, each one of y'all turn around and look at you, the, next, the one that's sitting behind you, next to you, across uh, from you, and you're looking right in Yahweh's face. Mm -hmm. Yahweh's always been there. And, they, and they, if, they, if they understand and read their Bibles right, they would know that. Yahweh had to make, if he made man in his own image, who, what man had to look like? Mm -hmm. He had to look like Yahweh. So if you look inside yourself, because he understands everything. It's just nothing. Me, myself, yeah, from the, all this physical stuff that I had, I was doing, and I just messed around and I just destroyed I just I did it myself. I just messed up my sight. But the physical sight is gone, but the spiritual sight is still there. I see, I see very well. Everybody thinks I'm blind. I'm not blind. I can see, I can see you. I see we are He hasn't he hasn't he hasn't taken that from me. He hasn't taken his his uh spirit from within me. I mean most most people at would would when it came when it comes to losing your sight, they'd had they'd have been all down in the dumps, having a fit and everything. When I started losing my sight, it didn't bother me. Cause I know where I was. Yahweh had me. I didn't have to worry about anything. And I have such such a, a beautiful accompaniment of family that I don't even worry. And the, the extended family is, is such a is, I've been blessed with such an extended family with you all. Uh, I just, I'm just having a glorious time. I'm just waiting for them to call me and so I can go ahead on home. But I'm having a good time. 
but the story just, just tells you that anything can be accomplished by anybody. I mean, David even became the king. Mm -hmm. He had everything, he had everything he ever wanted. And at, then at that, what he was, about 12 years old? I mean, that's the, he had the greatest coming. Armies couldn't take down Goliath. And David, a young boy took him down. And it wasn't but a stone and a sling. Now that's, that's, that's amazing. But that's how Yahweh works, amazingly. Takes the smallest things and make them the greatest. I mean, you don't have to have anything, anything that's, uh, unless you are a non-believer and just that you don't care about what happens to you and your soul. You don't have to worry about it. Because Yahweh takes care of all this. It's a, it's a beautiful thing when Yahweh, can, you can, when Yahweh can have you bring yourself to where you don't, you don't have to worry about the world or nothing that's out there in the world. Because you're not of the world. You just have to believe in, in Yahweh. Because on the inside, as sometimes I used to think about myself but when I was younger. I used to be angry all the time. It's not me, not, not anymore. Ever since Yahweh took me out of that, and took, took take me out of darkness, and then I send myself back into darkness, physical darkness. That's a good one. But he gave me out of the, out of, out of, out of, out of the physical darkness, he brought me out of that and brought me into a spiritual light. So I'm just as happy as I don't know what. I, I, I'm happy as hell. <laughs> Put it like that. Because <laughs> it can't get no better than that. So they can't do it. There ain't nothing in the world out there can do me. And nothing, nothing nobody can uh, uh, put, bring against me just like David. There's nothing that I, that I can withstand anything. There ain't no, no slings, no arrow they can throw at me that'll harm me. No, um, no, uh, no uh, weapon can defeat me. I stand on the word of Yahweh, and he takes care of me. And that's the best thing I could ever have. I don't worry about nothing. I don't care about nothing. I care about, I love and care about all of y'all. And y'all, the, 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 the main thing, I can see each one of y'all. Y'all are so beautiful. And it makes me proud, it makes me happy to be in y'all company whenever I'm here. And with those few words, I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning will be Dr. Judy Turner. Let me see what you do. Okay, Dr. Pam Turner. <laughs> uh, okay. Good morning, class. Good morning. Uh, that was beautiful. Wow, that was that beautiful. Okay. Um, I wish I didn't have to be so nervous. Um, I just, you know, it, it's really up to Yahshua. This is Yahshua's show. It's all about him. And uh, when Lawrence was, was talking, it, 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 it made me think about it. I've uh, been listening to this, um, this tape of, of uh, Richard Davis, the experience that he had when he was, he had a motorcycle accident and he was put into a, a coma. And it's just, I, I highly recommend it. I've been in class for almost 20 years and I have not listened to this thing yet. And I finally did. And it just really hit home with me because it, it makes you realize that, that Yahshua is with you. And, you know, when Lawrence was talking, it just kept echoing in my mind. It kept bringing back to hearing Richard Davis's voice and he hearing his account. But the thing that's fascinating is that, well, that didn't happen to Lawrence. Lawrence didn't actually, you know, he, he, he didn't go out of his body and, and, and experience 
what's beyond this flesh, but then again, yes, he did, right? Because, you know, you don't necessarily have to have that experience to have the faith. You don't have to have that experience in the flesh, in other words, is what I'm saying. You don't, you, you have that experience down at class, sitting in this chair, when you're hearing this gospel preached. That's the effect that this has on you. And that's how that really struck me because, um, shoot, did I not bring my water? Let me grab it. That's how that struck me because he was saying the same things that Richard Davis was saying after this experience about how, you know, I know that that faith is manifested. I know that Yahshua is with me. I know that he's taking care of me. Um, on and on. And so, and, and so what we get that, we get that from, from the preaching of this gospel, which is we're receiving that, we receive that spirit coming down here um, that, that, that spirit was poured out at Pentecost. But this, this story that we read, this scripture manifests um, these principles that are repeated and repeated all down through the Law and the Prophets, and that's what gives us that faith. That's um, what, when we hear this over and over and over, and these witnesses are, are shown to us, this is this is what the effect and Lawrence is a perfect example of, of just how he manifested that that faith and that and that love and knowing that that spirit is with you. And so I just wanted to um, so this this is a really meaty scripture. I just wanted to bring out a couple points and then um, hopefully the next speaker, well not hopefully, there's so much that can be extracted from this, so I know that the next person will be able to, to, to continue on, and so um, I'll just bring out a few things. Um, it, it's really beautiful, and David is one of my favorite figures in, in, the, in the, the, uh, the prophets because it, of, of just that heart that is manifested. It, it just... It just slays me every time when I read about David and that, and that heart that he had and uh, how much he loved his father, uh, his, his spiritual father. And, and you know, he, he loved him so much because he, he proved, just like he does with each and every one of us, he proved himself to him through, through the witnesses, through the proof. And so that's what we're going to get into here. So... Um, Gosh, it's really long. I don't know if I want to start right at the very beginning, but let's see here. Um, now, before, okay, before we start reading this, I just want to mention a couple things. Um, I just want to briefly talk about how in this class and in this teaching, the, the pattern of, of, of principles that we've been shown, and, and this is how it's, it's brought down through the scriptures. Okay. Now, um, let's see here. Can you get Isaiah, is it Isaiah 8 and 20? Is that to the law and to the testimony? Can you get that for me? And um, and then also, um, can you get, Jennifer, can you get um, that scripture? I'm not sure where it is exactly. It's um, in, like in, in the, I'm sorry. It's I think it's in Deuteronomy at the mouth of two or three witnesses will the matter be established. And so now we have in, in, you know, in your first five books of the Bible, um, we always talk about the law and the prophets, okay? And it's, that's, that's what we refer to as a, the two witnesses. And so things are brought out in the first five books and then in the prophets and then again in fulfillment when Yahshua comes in. So down in the law, you know, we have, we have the stories not only of, um, do you want to go ahead and get that, the Isaiah 8 and 20? Isaiah 8 and 20. Mm -hmm. To the law and to the testimony, mm -hmm. if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, so this is where it's at to, to get light or that illumination of understanding. Mm -hmm. You need to go back to the law and to the prophets. 
And so this is um, verified here. It's talked about, you know, we talk about witnesses a lot, and it may, may, it may make you think of, um, you know, you hear the Christians talk about witnessing to Jesus, but also in a court of law, you have witnesses, which are, you, they're, they're people that are brought to the stand to testify, right? So it's these things back here that are testifying. That's why we call them witnesses. These things, these events, but what happens is it's not just random. We start to see a repetition of principles, and that's the, and, and those, that repetition of those principles is what's testifying, and it's over and over and over. And so if so much proof adds up that you can't help but see. See, go ahead. It's 19. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. It's seven, Deuteronomy 17 and 6. No, at the it's mouth 19. of Deuteronomy. It's 19 and 15. I'm sorry. It's in a couple of places. It's in a couple of places. That's okay. That's okay. Go ahead. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy, be, he that is worthy of death, he put, I'm sorry, I'm reading this wrong, but at the mouth of witnesses he shall not be put to death. And 19. So. 19 and 15. Okay, that's okay, and it is, it, does, it is brought out in multiple places, and that's how Yahweh works. He does bring it out in multiple places. One witness shall mm -hmm. not rise against a man for any iniquity. So it's not just one. So you can't just go in the Bible, and you can't just pick out one scripture and say, this proves something. It's gonna, it has to be more than one. Go ahead. Or for any sin in any of the sin that he sinned. But at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall mm -hmm. the matter be established. So at the mouth of two, or at the mouth of three. Okay, so that's how something's going to be established. Okay, so we have back in the law, um, we have the story with the children of Israel, and we see that there's, <laughs> there's principles that are, are repeating. So down here, they had to kill a lamb, and, that, and there's, there's blood. So not only is there is there death everywhere because of the plague of the firstborn, but there, I mean there's a lot of blood. So all the ha everyone in their household, they're killing the lamb. They have to drain it and put it on the door on the inside, so that they can, be, so that that firstborn won't be killed. So we have blood. We have a lot of blood here, and then we have um, they come up to the Red Sea, and so which is water, and then the, there's that cloud that's leading them, which is the spirit. <laughs> And then they're in the, they're here in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, so these, so we come to find out that, which is manifested even um, more beautifully in, in this actual tabernacle pattern. I'm not going to get into the whole thing with the tabernacle and everything. I'm not going to pull scriptures on it, but, and you have to just keep coming back because we go into all this stuff in great detail, but this pattern you're going to find out that this is actually the pattern of, of the universe, <laughs> and it, it is the pattern that, that um, you know, Yahweh has chosen to manifest himself, or Yahweh Elohim. And um, so there's a whole backstory with that. But this pattern is, is like, we, we oftentimes will refer to it as like a slide rule that goes over all the stories. And the reason why is because the same uh, principles that I just mentioned, that blood, water, spirit, in this tabernacle, you have the same thing. So you have, um, and it's bigger here, so you have this, um, this altar of sin sacrifice, which, which um, there's blood, the, the sacrifice has to be killed, and of course there's blood, and they have to put blood on the horns, and then, um, actually it's probably washed first, but it doesn't always, it's not always in the same order, which you'll see in, when we get into the story with David, but the principles are always there. So you have blood, and you have the water and the labor, and then this holy anointing oil signifies the spirit, the quickening spirit, and then up in here, at the steps um, in, the, in the holy place equals 40. So you have that blood, water, spirit, and 40. And so these, we're going to look in this story, and, and we're going to find that these same principles are in the story. And, and the reason why it was set up this way is so that when it comes down to the point to where the Messiah comes in, then he has to go through this death. We're going to know that he's actually the one. And this is where that faith um, and that, that um, surety comes from that Lawrence was talking about. This is, this is the meat of it. This is how we know. And this is just one little story. I mean, there's just countless stories. So let's go ahead and start... Um, 
let's see here. So, so First Samuel 17, and uh, go ahead and just, you can skip the beginning part. So you can start at, at like three. First Samuel 17 and three, mm -hmm. and the Philistine. Philistine stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Mm -hmm. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Okay, that, that's good actually. Uh, let's see, so it's describing, now it's describing Goliath. Uh, this is the, the, everybody, you know, you hear, everybody's probably at one time when you're a kid or if you went to church or Sunday school, you know, the story of David and Goliath and oh, he slew the giant and it's, it's just like, kids like this story, it's cool. You know, you gotta, kids love slingshots. So it's a great story and, you know, it, it's, Thinking back, it's just so superficial. When, when back then, when I learned about it, it's like, oh, he had faith in God, and uh, he j he he knew that God would would mm -hmm. t help him take down the giant with the slingshot, and that's pretty much it. But there's so much more to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is just a description of of Goliath here. Uh, so let's see here. Go ahead and maybe just we'll cut down a little bit. Um, Let me see. Sorry, sorry, guys. Um, go ahead and go down to eight. Okay. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, mm -hmm. Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Right. So he just... He, he doesn't want the armies to fight. He, why, are you, why are you getting set up to fight? Why don't you just bring a man out, and then we'll, we'll just do it that way, in other words. You know, he just says, okay, so go, keep going. And if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. Mm -hmm. And if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Right. So he just wants it to come down to, to a, one fight. And, and this... You know, reflecting back on the story, this made me think about, he's talking about ser serving, and, you know, aren't we in servitude to that mystery of iniquity when we, you know, um, before we come into class? And you look at this, this giant and, and the fear that they have, you know, and he's likened unto this, this beast man of sin or this, this devil, this mm -hmm. son of perdition. He's that, that, you know, people just feel sometimes like so just beaten down and that they can't overcome, you know, their trials and, or, the, or the devil and, and we're being bombarded all the time. And back here, I mean, they just, you know, he, he walked up and they just, they just ran from him, you know, they just had so much fear. So, um, so keep going. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Uh-huh, okay. When Keep Saul going. and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Mm -hmm. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, the next unto him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. Okay, so, so here we find out David is the youngest, and his older brothers are warriors. They're going into battle. Mm -hmm. David is not. And oh. David was the youngest, mm -hmm. and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Okay, so now, um, now pause there. So I also wanted to mention, now I was talking about how these stories back um, in, in the Law and the Prophets, they, they point to Yahshua. And so we're going to look for the principles of the blood, the water, and the spirit. 
and 40, but we're also seeing here, this is setting up how David is, is a figure of Yahshua. And he, you know, it's talking about how he was a shepherd, right? And so isn't Yahshua a shepherd? And Yahshua, you know, he, he, Yahshua's job it was to feed his father's sheep. He could only save those that the father gave him. So, so Yahshua and is talking about David going to feed his father's sheep. So that's a reflection right there. So go ahead, keep going. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. Okay, so there's your 40. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp of thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul... And they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting for the Philistines with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. So now David was... He was real. He was he was humble. He he just did what his father told him to do. He he wasn't like oh I want to go save Israel. None of that. He just went and he he just went about his father's business and he was told to go feed the sheep. And then his father told him go down and check check on go go bring this stuff to your brethren. So that's what he did. Okay. So and, and went down to where they were fighting. Go ahead. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Okay, keep going. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted mm -hmm. his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Okay, so he's saying the same thing that he was saying before. Okay, go ahead. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled. They from fled. Him. They fled from him. And this isn't this like the same thing when you know when it came to they didn't want to, the ones that they didn't believe the report. They didn't want to go up into Canaan's land. They they said there's giants in the land, and they didn't believe Yahweh. They didn't believe that Yahweh would be able to to um, to defeat them. So keep going. And we're sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Mm -hmm. okay, and go David ahead. spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? Right, so this is David, and he and he's talking really boldly here. Now, none of the other men are talking like this, are they? Mm -hmm. David is, is uh, bold here. Okay, so here he is. He's a shepherd. He's not even one of the soldiers. He's not even one of the warriors. And he just comes down because his father told him to. Sound familiar, right? Mm -hmm. All those principles, they line up, you know? Not anything to be looked upon. He's the youngest. He's just, he would just blend in. It, it, it'd be, you know, be like one of the people, if they were in the camp, would probably think he was just there to take care of the horses or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when he starts talking like this, boldly, who is this? Who is this? That he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's crazy. So go ahead. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall mm -hmm. it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, the eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? Okay, hold on a second. So Eliab, so this is his oldest brother. Mm -hmm. So David's brother, who, who, should, who should love him, 
he's listening to him speak, probably made a fool out of him because he's talking all bold, and here he is, this little kid, and all of the, his men are afraid, right? Mm -hmm. So here his brother, his very brother, keep going, mm -hmm. listen to the way he's talking to him. <clears throat> Why camest thou down hither, and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness. You irresponsible little runt. Who did you leave those sheep with in the wilderness? You're coming down here? Okay, keep going. I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So he's talking to him like he's some little kid. Like your bratty little brother. Mm -hmm. Isn't he? Like a snotty-nosed little brother. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you're, you, you mm -hmm. naughty little thing and I know your pride. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. David's heart was anything but filled with pride. A anything mm -hmm. but filled with pride. He loved he loved his father Yahweh, and uh, that's not why he came down. Right. Keep going. And David said, "Oh well, wait, wait. So I'm sorry. One more thing. And and of course, you know, Yahshua's own brethren sought to kill him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And David said, "What have I now done? Is there not a cause?" And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. He just kept talking, saying, kept speaking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. So they just went and told Saul, Saul about it. This is what this little kid's saying. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Right. So, in other words, so David, you know, he, he sees how, how afraid his brethren are because of this, because of this Philistine. And... And, of course, Saul doesn't believe that he's able to go against him, of course. Now, I don't know how young um, David actually was. And, and Lawrence mentioned that he was 12. But all you have to do is look at, I mean, if somebody knows where that, where that is, that's cool. Uh, but you can clearly see the principles in here, that even just by the way people are treating him, that he's obviously, even if he was, no matter his age, he's being treated as if he's just a, just a, a, a young inexperienced, n not a warrior, not anybody that ever would be able to go up against this giant. I mean, it's just like absolutely ridiculous. And then people looked at Yahshua. I mean, it's same thing. He, you would just pass him in the street, you know? You, and they're like, come down off that cross and save yourself. I mean, it's just nothing about him outwardly was anything that they would think highly of. And even this tabernacle, you know, it's like the tabernacle was covered over with just badger skins. It was just, it, it was, it, by the description of it, it sounds like it was, it was very ugly. It wasn't like this glorious temple up here, you know, shining and just beautiful. It was just, you know, Yahshua in the flesh was just like this tabernacle on the outside, but on the inside it was, it was like filled with just these glorious principles of salvation and just all kinds of, you know, gold and, and beauty. And so, you know, you, you see this in David's heart. It's just, just phenomenal. So go ahead. 34. Mm -hmm. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went mm -hmm. out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Okay, right. So here he is, so doing his job, uh, tending his father's sheep, and he, you know, a lion and a bear. You know, this is just beyond our comprehension, but imagine you're literally, you're, you're just out, say you have a farm and you're out there and all of a sudden a, a, a huge wild animal comes. And, you know, Yahweh showed him that mm -hmm. he would take care of him, just like Lawrence was saying. He proved to him that, that he was the one keeping him safe, that, he, that he, he, he manifested salvation here to David. So, so keep going. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised 
Philistine shall be as one of them. Right. So he'll just be as one of the. He'll be just. It, I, I can. I can. I got this. In other words, I got this. Just like Yahweh's got this for me. Just like he did the lion and the bear. See, Go ahead. He hath defied the armies of the living Elohim. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just one. It was two. It had to be two. There has to be more than one. And these, right. these, this was the proof for the witnesses mm -hmm. for David. Okay, go David ahead. David said, moreover, mm -hmm. Yahweh that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. That's right. Okay. And Saul said unto David, go, and Yahweh be with thee. All right. So he said, all right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go. He, he convinced him. He said, go go ahead. Uh, so, but, but was he convinced? So let's see. He wasn't 100% convinced. So go ahead. And Saul <laughs> armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Mm -hmm. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. So he's trying to arm him with man's armor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. For he had not proved it. So he hadn't. Pr so what this is talking mm -hmm. about. So here he is. He's he's got all this heavy armor on, and then when it comes down to actually, you know, going out to to take on this this task of slaying this Philistine, he couldn't do it. He he knew he. When he says that he had not proved it, it means. It's just like, you know, we talk about prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all. It hadn't been proven. These, this armor was man's armor. It wasn't Yahweh's armor. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Yahweh's armor comes with witnesses or proof or these principles that I was just talking about. The repetition of the principles, multiple, if repeatedly. In, in, which is what the, the lion and the bear are a figure of. Those, that's the proof. He proved to him that he, could, that he could slay something with that weapon that he had, that he would have when he was out at, uh, doing his shepherding, right? But this armor, he had no experience. Don't we have to have f physical experience in our lives and our trials and tribulations? And those experiences prove Yahweh to us, right? Because he proves, he, when he gets us through it, it, it proves Yahweh's, you know, it, it proves that he's real to us. It proves that he's going to take care of us. So this armor that, that man trusts in was not proven to David that it would work. So he couldn't, he, he had to take it off. So go ahead. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have mm -hmm. not proved them. And David put them off him. Okay, so keep going. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Okay, so here's the brook. So we've we've already got got the forty. Mm -hmm. We had that the um, that we have that Goliath the Philistine presented mm -hmm. himself forty mm -hmm. days, and now we have the brook. So he took mm -hmm. that's water. So we have some. He took those smooth stones out of the brook. Go ahead. And put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the okay. Philistine mm -hmm. came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Mm -hmm. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. So there we go again. So it's just showing nothing, nothing that outwardly you would think that yeah. he would be able to do this job. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? Right. And the Philistine cursed David by his deities. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of that, Israel. That's right. That's right. So you, you come to me. So then you come to me with man's weapons, yeah. with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim mm -hmm. of the armies of Israel, whom you defied. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. This day will Yahweh deliver thee 
into the, mine hand. This day will Yahweh deliver thee. Who was with David? Mm -hmm. Yahweh was with David. He knew that Yahweh was with him. And he came in the name of Yahweh, and that's that spirit that was with him. Yeah. So we have, we, so far, so we have 40, we have spirit, and we have water. Yeah. Keep going. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. Uh, there's and your I blood. Will give Go the ahead. the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air mm -hmm. and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is an Elohim in Israel. Right. So that would be blood. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also when he actually does yeah. slew him and yes. take his head off, <laughs> literally. And all shall know that mm -hmm. Yahweh saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is Yahweh's. The battle is Yahweh. So it's beautiful. And he will give you into our hands. That's right. And it came mm -hmm. to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and, and sling it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. You're right. And I like how it also uses the word smote uh -huh. with the lion and the bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's familiar with that. Okay, go and ahead. David <laughs> prevailed over the Philistine, Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, mm -hmm. David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. That's right. And, and now it only mm -hmm. took one stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It only took one, but you know, mm -hmm. and, and notice that there's five stones, and that made me think of Pentecost, because you know we have a principle of, um, well, Penta, Penta is five, right? Mm -hmm. And and we this is, um, I don't know the whole backstory of how I can't run it, but fifty corresponds to Pentecost, mm -hmm. and so we have a five here, and. Mm -hmm. And that's important. I thought it was also cool that as we were reading the scripture in my book, verse 50, mm -hmm. which is also Pentecost, said, So David prevailed mm -hmm. over the Philistine mm -hmm. with a sling and with a stone. And see, that is that, that's Yahshua in you, slaying that, slaying that uh, mystery of iniquity mm -hmm. within you. He, and it only takes one. It only takes one revelation, and then you're sealed. It's just a one a one time thing. I think that's so beautiful, and and it happened, you know, that the spirit was poured out at Pentecost, and that's that that five, those five stones brings out the the five. Mm -hmm. So, I just think it's a beautiful thing. I I see. I'm going to stop here, but I see the. I see the, the, the principles brought out, the blood, water, the spirit. I see, um, you know, it, it showing forth Yahshua <coughs> fighting your battles, and he's taking down that mystery of iniquity, and, uh, and, and that faith that, you know, that he gives us through his witnesses. And um, it, it's just, you know, all praise and honor and glory go to Yahshua. For, I just feel so blessed that he, that he brought me down here, and um, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to let um, the next speaker just continue on, and uh, I, I know that there's a ton more stuff that can, that can be extracted out of the story. And uh, I guess I'll just end it right there and just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you. Speaker for this afternoon class would be Dr. Tyler Berkeley. Good afternoon. Oh boy. I thoroughly enjoyed both of the remarks of previous speakers. Um, I never really focused my mind on this story here with David and Goliath. And like you said, it's so much <laughs> in here, like you don't really pay attention to, but. Um, you know, when we was reading it, it was just all of these scriptures just kept popping in my head, you know, that goes along with this story. And it's just, it's so beautiful. 
It is so beautiful. Um, I'm just going to point out, I'm just going to pull out a few things that caught my attention with um, reading this. And um, you can start at uh, four. I just underlined certain ones, so we're going to have to go through everything. But um, just start at four, and then I'll interrupt when I can. Samuel 17, four. And, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. So that right there means like he was like tall. I don't know if it was that like six and a half feet or not. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really big. That's tall. <laughs> so um, keep, keep, go ahead. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. Mm -hmm. And he was armed with a coat of mail. Mm -hmm. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Mm -hmm. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders mm -hmm. and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shekel a shield, a shield went before him okay so he was armed mm -hmm. from his shoulders <laughs> to his feet to what is his his um he was armed. He was armed everywhere except his head. So he had all this physical armor on him. Oh, he had on the helmet. But he he had on the helmet. He was armed physically with all these with all this armor. Keep reading. Eight, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set a battle in array? I'm not I a Philistine and ye servants of Saul. So Saul. He, he, in his mind, set himself up to be like he's the mighty one. Why will you come up upon me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So already, don't that Mr. of Iniquity, he mm -hmm. thinks that way. Yeah. That he is high. He, he wants to be like, mm -hmm. you know, puffed up yeah. in his own image. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our, our servants and serve us. So he's already putting against like, you're going to serve me if I beat you, if we, if we kill you. Or, you know, basically it's a battle against, it's a spiritual battle to, from what I, I'm, I'm looking at it. Either you're going to serve me or I'm going to serve you. That's basically what he's saying. It's a spiritual principles going on. It's not really physical what Yahweh is trying to show us. Um, go to 14. And David was the youngest and the three old, oh, I'm sorry. And David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. Mm -hmm. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep. And Bethlehem. that's the principle that you brought out, that he was like Joshua, where he returned to feed his father's sheep. And that's what we do down here. Joshua is feeding us. He, we are his sheep. He's feeding his father's sheep. Um, go to, uh, it's another one I underline. Go to, um, start at 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he came up, and it shall be that that man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Mm -hmm. He's going to be blessed by, by destroying this giant. He's going to be blessed. And aren't we blessed when we come down here and we get some of those things that are in our mind rid of us don't we get blessed spiritually when we have things going on within us you know if we hold on to those things that are not of yashua you know it's it's hard it's like we're being stiff necked you know but we have to release some of those things that's attached to us it is not of yahweh and we we get blessed spiritually um keep reading and David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? Mm -hmm. For who is this uncircumcised Palestine, that he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? And the people okay, said, stop right there. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Mm -hmm. Go to Deuteronomy 10 and 6. 
Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, go ahead. Deuteronomy 10 and 6. And the children of Israel took their journey from Bethro of the children of Jachan and Mosira, where Abraham, where I don't there think that Aaron was it. died, and there he was buried, and Eliezer, his son, ministered. Was it 10? Office. No, 10 and 16. I'm sorry. Yeah. 10 okay. and 16. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Okay, so that right there is just showing the principle, and they're pointing it out, because with you being uncircumcised, you have that, that um, taking on that, of the mystery of iniquity and Yahweh is telling us that we have to circumcise the foreskin of our heart. So right there is saying he's pointing out that he's an uncircumcised Philistine. So that right there just it just <laughs> stood out to me. And um go to uh what else? It's just so much in here. Oh my goodness. Um start at uh uh go to keep reading. I, I guess then I'm uh, um interrupt. I don't want you to read all of this because it's so much in here. Um go to thirty four. Samuel 34? Yes, yeah, Samuel 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant, keep thy father's sheep. And there came a lion mm -hmm. and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Mm -hmm. And they went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose, arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And their uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living El. Mm -hmm. David said, Moreover, Yahweh that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and Yahweh will be with thee. And um, like she and said, that, yeah, um, that Yahshua will always be with us and um i didn't i forgot to pull it out but um on 30 when you read what it was like 31 when david was speaking and his brother heard him speaking he didn't um it, it was like he, he was saying like who are you like you're just a child coming up on this big giant and um what is that get the scripture for me um i think it's isaiah 53 and 2 it's just it's showing principles of, of Yahshua and how people look upon Yahshua and how people look upon us when we come up to anybody with this gospel. They look at us like, who are you? You know, like we're crazy or we're weird. You know, I had somebody call me weird. <laughs> you know, yeah, because it's, we're not like them. They don't they look upon us on the outer appearance. They're not looking on the inside. Isaiah 53, and I'll pick it up at 1. Who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? Mm -hmm. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground. Mm -hmm. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And, and what can grow? And basically, a root out of a dry ground. What can grow? Out of a dry ground, but Yahshua is that root that grow out of a dry ground. Um, go ahead, keep reading. Well, read it. Read that again. Okay, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. Mm -hmm. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Mm -hmm. He is despised and rejected of men, mm -hmm. a man of sorrows, <coughs> and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrow. <coughs> Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim, and afflicted. Same thing here with David. They they don't look upon him as that. It's just so many principles of of Yahshua that you see in here, and it's it's just so beautiful. But it's pointed out toward it's pointed out Yahshua so that we can have. Uh, uh, witnesses that we have that faith. Um, keep reading. Go go down to um, Samuel. What is? Did we read thirty seven? Did we did we go there? Uh, yes, we did read that, but I can read it again. Yeah, keep going. David said, "Moreover, Yahweh that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine." And Saul said unto David, "Go." And Yahweh be with thee. And keep Saul, up. I'm sorry, keep going. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. 
Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. Mm -hmm. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. So basically he said, I don't need all this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need all this extra stuff. I'm a 12-year-old child with all this armor on me. What am I going to do? I don't need all this. Take all this off of me. Keep reading. And put them in his shepherd's bag. They put the, I'll start it. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones mm -hmm. out of the brook. And put them in a shepherd's bag which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Mm-hmm. And go, sorry. The Philistine came on and drew near David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Mm -hmm. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Now there again, <laughs> looking at him like he's, like he's no one. Keep reading. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Keep reading. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And that's the only thing that he need was that name. Like she said, and just like the children of Israel, who just like Moses, when he went down to go up against Pharaoh, he was a, a, a slow of speech. He was, he was a shepherd. Yeah. He took care of the flock. Yeah. And, you know, to the Egyptians, that was looked upon like, you know, someone that is not, you know, I don't know, just disgusting, I guess, like nasty because you be around these sheep and these animals all the time. So I guess he stunk to them. But he came down with that name of Yahweh, and that was salvation for them. And just like, I mean, they got saved with that name against Pharaoh, who was a type and shadow. We know of that mystery of iniquity and the same thing, same principle, you know, who is Yahweh? You know, I'm, I'm Pharaoh. You know, he puffed himself up. In his mind, just like that mystery of iniquity do, you know, you see these principles and they were saved by that name of Yahweh. Um, it's just so beautiful. Um, where where do we stop at? Go is another one. It's so much in here. I kept underlining. Um, where do we stop at? We stopped at 46 coming up. Okay, keep keep reading. Keep going down. This day will Yahweh deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is an Elohim in Israel. Mm -hmm. and, all the, and all this assembly shall know that Yahweh saveth not with a sword mm -mm. or a spear. For the battle is Yahweh's, and he will give you into our hands. What's that, what's that uh, scripture which says our weapons are, um, yeah, get that, get that. 2 Corinthians what, Joe? 10. Okay. Okay, first, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 1. Now I saw myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Yahshua, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. We don't walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we do not war after the flesh. And that's what Lawrence, I believe, was talking about. You know, he's walking in the flesh, but he's not concerned about the things. You know, he's, he's blind in the, you know, flesh, but he, he's in light. You know, that's what Lawrence was talking about. Keep reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. The pulling down of strongholds. 
Oh. Casting down imaginations mm -hmm. and every high thing mm -hmm. that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. And, and that's what I think of when I think of this um, David and Goliath is that he's casting down that those high mm -hmm. things in those high places. Mm -hmm. And bringing into captivity mm -hmm. every thought mm -hmm. to the obedience of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Circumcise your heart. Yep. <laughs> the uncircumcised Philistine. Um, go back to the scripture. Go to, um, where do we stop at? Uh, 48. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to, da to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it mm -hmm. and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. The stone sunk into his forehead mm -hmm. and he fell upon the face of the earth. Get Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Because it's these principles, you read them, but you understand there's not, it's not just a stone that he's using that sunk in that giant's forehead. And it's, it's spiritual principles that we have to um, look upon, you know, when we're reading these scriptures. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul mm -hmm. and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, these, it's the name of Yahweh, which is, is Yahshua, that um, we're, we're getting when we come down here and we hearing, you know, the speaker speak. Is the, what, what's that scripture? Um, my words are spirit and um, they are life. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we're getting. We're getting that spirit of Yahweh put within us in our heart and our mind when we come down here and we have to lay them in our heart and our mind. And that's the pulling down of the stronghold. That's the pulling down of of all the theories and opinions and stuff that we came in here with. And we can't get that out there. We can't get that in the world. It's, it's Yahshua that's doing the the speaking. He's doing the teaching. He's he's fighting our battles for us. Mm -hmm. And so here is just so beautiful that you know you see these principles and he took that stone and he laid it in the he hit him in the forehead. <laughs> it sunk in his forehead and that that pulled down that giant. But you have this twelve year old boy that's just not looked upon as anything mighty but he had that name of Yahweh and he pulled down that giant with that name and that's exactly what we do when we come down here it's just it's, it's liberating you know what I mean it's just so beautiful <laughs> and um that's just what I got out of these things and I thought about I thought about it took me back when um when we talk about the seeds and those seeds being placed in the ground and laying up those seeds and bringing forth fruit because that's the preaching of the gospel laying our foundation and breaking up that ground because you know when you plant i gotta go back to the plants <laughs> when you plant that that earth is hard you have a lot of of things that's in that ground you have to pull the weeds you know you have to till it you know it's a lot of work to go into it you just can't take that seat and just lay it down and it's going to sprout up you have to break up you know some things of that earth and that's what we do when we come down here Yahshua is breaking up a lot of things that we have in our head you know in our skull and when he plant those seeds that's the preaching of the gospel and it's sprouting up fruit it's bringing us it's, it's giving us life you know what I mean it's it's not just and, and sometimes that ground is hard. That sometimes, you know, you, it, it's a lot to goes on in that earth, in that physical earth. It's hard, you know, so you have to add the water. You have to pull the weeds and all that. But once you get that plant, that seed planted in the right position, in the, you know, right soil, the right, right conditions, and then that's when that fruit sprout up. And to me, that's what I thought about, you know, when, God, when we hear Yahshua speaks, He's laying that 
foundation. He's laying that fruit within our hearts and in our mind, and that's that's the liberation for us. That's the life that we're getting when we come down here. So it's that's just some a few things that I just thought it just kept popping in my head when I read this, and I'm just like, how can I miss this? <laughs> you know, I've been reading this, but I never really paid attention to this. But this is a beautiful story, like you said. It's so meaty. It's so much in here, but you just keep reading things over and over again, and it's just. It skips by you, but today it just really stood out, you know, and um, I just enjoyed the speaking. I just enjoyed how I'm blessed, and it's just a, a happy moment. We have anything to say, you know, again, to, towards this gospel, and I'm just thankful that he could just use me to have anything to say because it's a blessing and it's a privilege, and not everybody have you know, that understanding of these scriptures. And um, just with that, I just say all praises go to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua. And hallelujah. Um, next speaker for this afternoon, Claire. Dr. Cynthia. Good afternoon. As always, it's good to be here. Um, the previous speaker just painted a beautiful portrait of, you know, this scripture and how it shows forth Yahshua the Messiah. And, you know, one of the things that stuck with me, which has kind of already been covered, I mean, I'm not going to say anything that probably has not already been covered, mm -hmm. you know, but go back to um, the scripture lesson we had last Sunday, which was... Um, was it Genesis? Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Oh, I'm... Oh, well, I, I want Genesis. Maybe I didn't write anything down last Sunday. Genesis 22. Yes. And 1? Yes. Genesis 22 and 1. And it came to pass after these things that Yahweh did tempt Abraham and said unto him. Okay, Abraham. now in, that's the King James Bible? Yes. Okay. So in the Holy Name Bible, it says that Yahweh proved Abraham. Okay. And we have that again also in this story with David. Now, can you look up proof for me? Anybody has it? Well, I looked it up on my phone. It's demonstration of the truth or existence of something by evidence or argument. Okay, so it's to demonstrate the truth or existence of something by argument or by evidence, evidence yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And the second definition, Joe. Of bread dough. Okay. <laughs> now, I like to bake. Yeah. Okay, and so when it talks about Proving the dough, what is it talking about? Become aerated by the action of yeast, rise. Okay, so when you look up the word aerated, mm -hmm. it means to inject air into the equation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any yeast in your dough, it's not going to what? Rise, right? right. Mm -hmm. So when you can equate air to spirit. Right. Right. So see, we are being proven... Mm -hmm by the Holy Spirit. And when you look at Abraham, we understand the whole story with Abraham was that Yahweh had proven himself to Abraham, right? As it were. And when Abraham was given a directive by Yahweh or by Elohim, he followed it without any question. Why? Because Yahweh had already proven himself to him. And we also talked about how part of the proof was that when he told Abraham, look, you're going to have a son. 
Now, both he and his wife, Sarah, was way past childbearing years. Now, there's one um, star right now, Bridget Nielsen. Mm -hmm. She's 54, 54. Yeah. and she's oh, pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to that at this stage of my life. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, even in the airplane, you have some people as old as, I think I read one story about 60 something or 70. You know, that's usually someone that, in this particular case, it was a lady who got pregnant or who carried the child for her daughter because her daughter didn't have the ability to do so. But 99 and what, a hundred? Yeah. Are you, mm. no wonder Sarah laughed. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is nuts. <laughs> First of all, it's physically and, mm -hmm. but we tell you, don't count out Yahweh and his abilities, mm -hmm. right? Because see, from a physical standpoint, we would think that that's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Let alone what it look. He, he, I'm sure it ha I'm, I'm not going to even go there. <laughs> but you, you understand what I'm saying. At that stage, it's, for her, she thought it was impossible. But Yahweh proved it otherwise. And so when you get down to the story with um, David here, you know, we're also taught to not discount anybody when it comes to this gospel. That you can learn something from a child when it comes to the teaching of Yahweh. And not to discount anyone because someone gets on the floor and you think that they're, oh, they're not going to do a good job. They're not going to say anything I want to hear. You need to put on, always have your ears open. Because like Pam said, it only takes one thing for someone to, for something to be said or one time for something to be said that's going to steal you from a, phys, from a spiritual standpoint. And we have to keep being conscious of that. It doesn't matter who gets on the floor and preach. Because see, Yahweh has something to say through everybody. We're all babes in this gospel, right? In our knowledge and understanding when it comes to, Yah to Yahweh and his purpose, we're all babes. We're all learning. But the thing is, is that we have to know the difference between someone that professes something and they believe in Yahweh or someone that professes something and it's, on, it's only about their own ego. Because the story with David brings back to mind another story when you have um, Joseph, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Joseph, he was the youngest of all his brothers, right? right? And Yahweh did indeed speak through him because Yahweh gave him a vision, right? Mm -hmm. And he told him that the oldest were going to serve you. Yeah. And so when he told this to his brothers, they didn't want to hear it. Right. And even... But even his, didn't his father get a little miff too? When he heard it, I, I thought I read that. But I know for sure that his brothers turned, you know, looked at him sideways when he told him what Yahweh had showed him in a dream, right? And so for that reason, they sought to get rid of him. After all, like Pam was saying, look, you're just a little runt. You don't know anything. What do you know? But see, we can't take that stand with Yahweh. Because anyone, you can learn something about the purpose of Yahweh from watching a fish. Right? A little fish, a little goldfish in his fishbowl. You can learn, right? Because even if you're just looking at that fish and you see his gills going in and out. Yahweh, Yahweh, right? We, after all, we said we breathe his name, right? Does that go for the fish too? They, they're breathing. It may not be in the same manner as us, but they're still breathing. So we can learn something even from the little goldfish. So you can't count out anybody. So going back over here to David. 
Now David, Yahweh has shown him, had worked with him before. Because when you go into the previous chapter, David was a musician. And Yahweh gave him some skills. And so didn't he soothe, who was the king? Saul. He soothed him, right? When he had bad dreams, he came and he played unto him, right? So Yahweh had already given him some gifts. And see, Yahweh gives us gifts. And you can't hurt anybody else's gift. Your gift is your gift, and their gift is their gift, right? But that doesn't mean any one gift is any less than anybody else's. It's just, you understand what I'm saying? So let's get, um, do I have anything holding? No. What I did find where you had um, Jacob and Joseph, the father, rebuked him. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I thought I read that yeah. too. Yeah. That even his dad got a little yeah. miff with him yeah. when he said, Look But the thing and but isn't that something to say to someone? Mm. Imagine I walk up to you and I say, You're gonna bow down mm. to me. But he was saying that because that's what Yahweh had showed him. Right. He was only speaking the truth. It wasn't his ego. That was saying that. It wasn't like Pharaoh that was saying that, right? Because Pharaoh pretty much, if he didn't say the same thing, it was understood that it was the same thing that he was saying for people to bow down to him, right? Because when he said, Look, I don't know Yahweh, and neither would I let them go. He was showing for what? The power that he thought he had. But he didn't understand that Yahweh was the one that gave him the power. So see, he was boasting because of his own arrogance. But see, Jacob, Joe, who am I talking about? Yeah, I know. No, Joseph. When he told his brothers that they were going to bow down to him, it wasn't for his own ego. It was because Yahweh had showed that to him. And see, for the very things that we say concerning Yahweh, they sought to do something to us too, right? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, these days you have laws put into place that, you know, kind of keep that sort of thing at bay. Because I'm sure they would rather do much more than just laugh at us. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes when you get in their face about their Jesus, they would rather do something more than just laugh or just walk away. But see, laws today are kind of <laughs> prohibiting that a little bit. You know, but that still doesn't stop them sometimes from trying you. You understand what I'm saying? But we know that our weapons are not of this world. And see, the only thing that we can do is speak the truth. And that's it. The truth will make you free. That's the only thing we can do is speak the truth and speak what thus said Yahweh. That's it. And see... With David here, when he was talking about that armor. Mm -hmm. Now here's Goliath. He's all decked out in all his armor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean from head to toe, right? Yeah. Now David was given the same stuff. He said, look, I haven't proven it. It has not been proven. You don't go into a fight without proving something. Now those guys in the military... They go to what? Basic training, right? Wow. You don't just pick up somebody and then just put them out there on the front line and say, there you go. <laughs> right? You train them. They go through training. And when they have weapons, they use those weapons in that training, do they not? They are taught to take those weapons, almost sleep with it, because they have to take it apart, put it back together. They have to know that weapon inside and out, right? They have to have the ability to put that weapon back together blindfolded. Do they not? So therefore, they are proving those weapons. Because they can't get out on the line and it don't work. That's like you shooting a gun and run out of bullets, you go throw it at the person. I mean, I've seen that in movies. It doesn't do any good, right? 
It's not going to help you one bit to throw your weapon at the other person. So you better make sure that it works. So David said, look, I haven't proven this stuff. So I'm not going to go out here. But see, he had the wherewithal to know that, look, all I need is Yahweh. All I need is to believe in what Yahweh told me to do. See, he is the one who sent me. And see, here comes Goliath. Again, sin is, you know, he's like this, and this one is like that. And so he's thinking the same thing, like his brothers did. What? Why y'all sent this little dude? I can take him and, and pick my teeth with him. You understand? I'm sure that's what he's thinking. I'm sure that's what he's thinking. But see, Yahweh proved himself to him. Now, you have the children of Israel back here that Yahweh proved himself to them. But see, they did not have the stuff within them to accept the proof or to see the proof. You know, because we always talk about how when they came to the through the Red Sea, they was following the cloud, right? But nevertheless, how the sea turn it up? And then we talk about with those plagues, how they had light and the rest of everybody else down there were in darkness, right? Now, if you can't understand that that's something phenomenal going on there, then you do not have the right stuff in you to see it. Going to the Red Sea, seeing it tunnel up, Did you really think Moses did that? But see, that's what they thought. You, you understand? That's not what we would think, hopefully. But see, because they didn't have the right stuff in them, they were still looking at Moses. Because after all, when they got over here into the wilderness of Sinai, and Moses went to the top of, of the mountain, they told Aaron, look, build us a golden calf. Because for as for this Moses, we don't know what happened to him. So they were still following behind Moses and thinking Moses had the ability to do something. But see, Moses, when he got on that, when he got in front of that Red Sea, he said what? He said, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Were you not listening? Moses didn't say, stand still and look what I can do. He did not say that. He says, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. There's a clue for you who's actually doing the work. But see, you're so busy looking at the physical. But you have to understand that, yeah, I'm talking about the chosen Israel, but it wasn't their fault because you know what? It wasn't their time. It wasn't time for the flesh to be overthrown at this particular point. The flesh doesn't get overthrown until what? Until, well, Yahshua the Messiah dies on the cross, right? And then Pentecost comes in. That's when the flesh is out the way. But see, back here, it was all flesh, all the time. And so they had no choice but to feel that way. And see, we have to, and we were talking about those aging dispensations, right? On Wednesday. So we have to learn where we are. We are no longer in the post diluvian age. Right? We are supposed to be in the present kingdom age. That is what? After the cross. Therefore, the flesh is out. Right? And see, we have to keep reminding ourselves that, that the flesh is out. So we don't get caught up on the flesh. It's one thing to say it. We have to stop saying it and do it. You know, we tell each other, oh, I love you because I see Yahshua and Messiah in you. That's what I love about you. Then that's what you need to demonstrate all the time. That's what you love about that person. Leave the flesh out the way. We're not doing that. We are not doing that. And see, we have these stories 
countless stories all the time. I'm talking about David here. He wasn't worried about that armor. Because he had Yahweh behind him. He had the living Elohim behind him. And when you look at that slingshot, see, that slingshot, that's Elohim. That stone is Joshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So it went right there. Right there. And you talk about that stone, which is set at naughty you builders. Right? Yeah. Which is now what? Becomes head of the... And then what it also goes on to say, look, Yahshua Messiah, whom you crucified, who Yahweh's raised from the dead. So see, something happened. And see, it talks about those smooth stones. Five smooth stones. Get, um... <clears throat> Let's just get that word, the stones in our uh, over there in Acts. Four and eleven. Mm -hmm. Acts four and eleven. Mm-hmm. And because when Pam was on the floor, she talked about prove all things. And see, that's one of the scriptures when I first came into class. They used to get all the time. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Right? We used to get that all the time. Prove all things. See, we... <sighs> Yahweh proves us. And we prove him. Because if you didn't prove him, then you wouldn't still be sitting here. You wouldn't have been able to accept. And we understand that Yahshua within you is the one that's doing the accepting. But for the sake of argument, we are proving Yahweh too. Because how many times we do dumb things and, oh, if you can just get me out of this one, right? But you're proving that he does exist. He is real. But at the same time, we are being proven also. Go ahead. Acts, Acts 4.17. Mm -hmm. What was that verse? 11. 11. <laughs> this is the stone which was set at naught of you building, mm -hmm. which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name. Okay, so he goes on to say, look, there is no salvation in any other. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Right, and we can only be saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And see, David knew that. He knew that. He went equipped with the right stuff. We talk about that. And I think we already got that scripture where our armor is not physical, right? We talked about that. You have to put on that armor of righteousness. That's the only way you're going to survive in a war. The army, I mean, the armor of righteousness. And see, it doesn't matter about what kind of weapon the other person has. Because we understand that the armor of righteousness is going to overthrow that every single time. Now, why didn't Goliath duck when he saw that, that rock coming at him? Why? It came too fast. Thank you. He didn't see it. It came too fast, right? It reminds me that when... What is the, the situation where... I mean, there was a lot of situations where I think it was one in particular where they sought Yahshua, but they went to find him and he wasn't there or something like he that. Found his way. He went yeah, yeah, and and just like with those those wicked men down there in um, Sodom, right? They were themselves trying to find the door. 
Sí. Um, do I have anything else holding? I just have the axe. Okay. Um, I think that's. I forgot. I I wanted to say something else. I forgot what I wanted to say now. Fin just finish reading that, Jennifer. Maybe it'll come to me. I'll, I'll start at 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Mm -hmm. There is none other name under heaven given among men where, whereby we must be saved. Now 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, mm -hmm. they marveled. Right, they that they took knowledge of them that they had been with Yahshua the Messiah. And oh I I I can't remember what I wanted to say, but you know, we are being proven. And what are we being proven for? To find out if we are worthy. We are being proven to be worthy. Because our doxologist says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, right? He is the one that's going to keep us from falling. But we have to be presented worthy. We have to clean up this old flesh. Because what, what else are we down here for? If we're not being proven to be worthy of inheriting eternal life. That's part of what we go through. Now, yes, he did make the promise to us. But guess what? When he made that promise up there to Abraham, he told him, look, I am going to give it to you, but your seed is going to have to go down into a land that they know not of and be evilly entreated. Why? Because he was proving something. He was proving them. Now, see, we are here today. We can look back at what he was proving them, how he was proving them. And see, he's proven us the same way. Now, we understand that because of their unbelief, they wandered around in this wilderness, right? Because they didn't believe in the word of Yahweh. Now, see, you don't want to be found wandering. It's time to stop wandering because we wandered out there in the world for so long. Stop wandering around the world. See, you can find rest right in here. And I'm not talking about this physical building. When I say in here, I mean in Yahshua the Messiah. Because we now understand what the temple is, right? Hopefully everyone understands now what the temple is. It's not some physical building. That's why there's a mess over there in um, Israel. Because they're fighting for some physical building. It's not physical. You, we're not going to open the doors and let the Lord in. You have to understand what the temple is right now. Because isn't it Paul that asked that question? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? See, you can come in and get some rest. Because in 2 Thessalonians it says, For you who are troubled, rest with us. And see, the first or second. Rest with us. We're in the rest. This is the rest. And you know, and it was interesting how on Wednesday we were talking about that ages and dispensation, and then we were also talking about the time, the chronological time as to what we're in right now. You know what? It doesn't matter what year we're in. It doesn't matter what physical year we're in. Your state of mind is, what's, is what matters. See, we should be in that rest right now. In our physical minds, we should be in a spiritual resting. We should be thinking time is out right now. Mm -hmm. Because it is. Mm -hmm. Now, didn't Dr. Keeler say in 19-something-something something, time was out? We're in the grace period. But see, the grace period is not going to last forever. When you potty train a child, you give them a grace period, right? You, they, don't, they don't keep the grace period until they're 15. 
The grace period has to end at some point. So we have to understand that we need to be ready now. He told them, children of Israel, you know, one of those plagues, he said, or before, I guess before they started with the plagues, he said, look, have your, what is it, your, your shoes shod and you, or your feet girded and, yeah, be ready. Be ready. We have to be ready. And see, that message down the street, Jesus is coming, be ready. You know, we, we have to stay ready. Because we understand that he is here. He never left his creation. Because as my uncle said, he said, look, I'm going to be with you always. Now, you, you may not see me in the physical anymore, but I will be in, I am with you in the spirit. And see, just be understanding that we are being proven. And like David had to prove that, didn't prove that armor, he said, look, I'm taking with me what works. Because after all, he used that slingshot before, did he not? So he took with him what worked for him. So we need to take with us what works for us. Don't try to pull on something that somebody else has. Because what somebody else has may not work for you. And with that, I'll say hallelujah and thank you for the time. Seven and eight. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, dear. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She said she's just kidding. What'd you say? I know. You make your announcement. <laughs> oh, choir rehearsal uh, next Sunday. Choir members. Okay. All right. You're welcome. We hold classes on Sunday from 11 to 1 and on Wednesday from 7 to 9. May we all stand to be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last two verses of June. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both for all times, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.